today we are laying around and watching Kaito Tenshi Twin Angel and all of the sequels, which is really, so uh, this seems to be not a very well known show. So I guess the main show really is um, Kaito Tenshi Twin Angel Kyun Kyun Tokimeki Paradise, uh, which is an amazing title for a show. Uh, and um, uh, that was based on a two episode OVA which came out a few years earlier in 2008 called Kaito Tenji Twin Angel. It's just like, it's a sequel. It's not based on it, it's the sequel. Uh, the sequel to Kaito Tenji Twin Angel. So we're watching Kaito Tenji Twin Angel. Then the sequel, which is Kaito Tenji Twin Angel Kyun Kyun Tokimeki Paradise. And then we're going to be watching the sequel to that, which is Twin Angel Break. So that's uh, two episode OVA and then two 12 episode anime. Um, uh, roughly, if you're interested in the show, they, they seem to be, I don't know much about them, they seem to be some sort of parody magical girl show. Um, uh, but not like a, a, a dark, they're, they're supposed to be subverting the magical girl genre, but more in the Moe Tan line of, line of things, rather than the, uh, you know, terrible, well, not all terrible, mostly bad, edgy, Yuki Yuna type of thing. Uh, magical Girl Raising Project, Madoka type of, type of thing. They they are subverting or deconstructing the genre in in a comp for, for comedy and absurdism's sake. Kind of like, kind of like Tante Opera Milky Holmes, maybe, or Moe Tan, or something similar to that. That's just what I'm, I'm guessing from reading descriptions and stuff. Obviously, I haven't actually watched it yet, because that's what this video is about. So I'm going to close the tab where I was rereading Postscript on the Societies of Control, and uh, start watching uh, Kaito Tenshi Twin Angel, the OVA. Now, I don't expect this show to be particularly good. It doesn't have very good... I mean, the, the first season has a... a uh, I mean, the, the OVA has a 6.02 on Mal, which is uh, pretty bad. And only only 1,000 or so users. Uh, the the uh, uh, Kyun Kyun Tokimeki Paradise has a 6.6, .6, and Twin Angel Break, which came out in... 2017 has a 5.92 so this should be a, a, an interesting day this this is about I, I believe eight or nine nine hours of anime so um yeah let's let's get started with watching the OVA I'm gonna I'm gonna be live this is the, this, if you don't know what the format of a laying around watching video is it's basically a live tweet but with a camera instead of a Twitter so we're gonna be we're gonna be laying around watching watching this thing. Let's go. Okay, so far, there's been a cold open with a... It seems like sort of the main girl is, is somewhat incompetent. And then the her, her friend slash implied Yuri uh, is really good with a bow and arrow and sort of saves her. And, um, and then at the last minute when they're about to get captured... Um, what seems to be the exact character from Sailor Moon, the the guy, for, you know that I've never seen Sailor Moon, but you, you know the meme when it with, with like um, it looks like my work here was done, but you didn't do anything. You know the guy with the, that guy, he looks exactly like that. Um, this is overall, kind of like, es my fucking aesthetic. Like, I I I recommend you you go look up the uh the logo for for the OVA, um, Twin Angel OVA, because um, that, that logo is like, that's my shit, you know? Uh, the girls, they're cute, their character designs are good. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even mention why why I was watching this. So, it, it, it has, um, I, I was just going through um, Akio Watanabe's, um, like credits and I found it, but now I'm looking at it. I, I Akio Watanabe isn't in the credits of this, so I don't I don't know why how I fucking I don't know. Oh, I guess he didn't do the OVA, but maybe he did the some sort of latest stuff. I hold on. I need to find out now. Pause. Pause the episode. We're gonna we're gonna look at the stuff. Um, did he do character designs for the this for for uh, for, um, Kyun Kyun Tokimeki Paradise or something? Uh, 
yeah, yeah. He, oh, he did principal drawing. I don't know what principal drawing means. I guess he just did, did the drawings. Yeah, I was I was looking at it because um. I was I was researching him because he's cool, but he didn't do this. He did he didn't do the OVA. He did Tokimeki, Kin Kin Tokimeki Paradise or Tokimeki Memorial. Um. So uh, the um. The music in this show is a uh, how do I how do I explain it? It's it's generic. Okay, I I wouldn't I think like a lot of people would call it generic, but I I would call it comfort comfortingly familiar, right? It it sounds kind of like every other anime soundtrack that you've ever heard, but in a way that feels um g g like it's genuinely coming from the same place not like it's trying to be a pale imitation of something better uh like the background music it sounds sounds like someone who is just in that culture uh, and in that sort of art movement mu music movement rather than someone who's trying to imitate that movement which a lot of a, a lot of bgm stuff sounds like someone who is trying to make anime bait bgm like the stuff they've heard before or is this just sounds like someone who is naturally involved in that um culture i guess i like it okay so so far i i wouldn't call this like i mean the ova i'm watching i'm still on episode one they're 30 minutes each the ova episodes um I wouldn't call it like subversive or like, uh, you know, any anything like that. It's it's just otaku oriented magical girl, same as other otaku oriented, and it's not even that otaku oriented. Like there's a couple of little jokes, like for example, an episode of Comp Ace is involved. I mean, sorry, not an episode, a, a volume of Comp Ace, which is like a, a Japanese, like anime magazine, uh, like uh, as like a visual novel. Gaming, gaming, anime, otaku type magazine is, is briefly shown, um, just like a real cover. Like it, it, it on the cover. I'm not the best at Japanese, but I'm pretty sure it's it's it says a uh, lucky star. It says type moon in English, it, and um, it has a picture of the characters from Lucky Star. Like just the actual, like it's not like a a, a rip off design like they sometimes do. Like no, it's just the it's just an actual cover of Comp Base. Um, so that's interesting, I guess. But yeah, other than that, I haven't seen much that is different from just a normal, fairly standard Magical Girl show. Like, it's not standard, but it's not like... like how do I put it? It's not f formulaically... Oh, shit. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I thought plot things were happening, but... Um... Oh no, plot things are happening. Damn. Interesting plot things are happening. Not really. Not that interesting. But, um... So... How do I put it? Like, it's not... It doesn't have the standard magical girl formula. As in, like, pacing-wise. Oh! Okay, okay. I guess this is definitely made for not children. Like, that's what I would say. It's a magical girl show that's not made for children. That's targeted at otaku. But it's not... Like... You know, it's it's nothing like a, you know, a, a, really any of the other shows that I mentioned. Like it's it's nothing like any of the dark, edgy magical girl shows. It's not really as comedy focused as like Milky Holmes or, um, Moe Tan or I mean Milky Holmes isn't really a magical girl show either, so it's kind of weird. But um, yeah, it's hard to say. Hard to say what this is. It's because it's not quite a traditional magical girl show. Like the uh, the pacing is different. There's like uh, I don't know. M maybe it's. Do you know what it almost feels like? Is like like some imagine imagine um, what's that fucking show called? Prisma Ilia without the fan service, which is like there's basically nothing left. <laughs> But it kind of feels like some of the bits in Prisma Ilia, a little bit. Without, but it's not like super fan service or anything. So, hmm, it's an interesting show. Well, this is just the OVA. I assume that it's going to get 
the tone's going to be different because according to the comments on now the on the Tokimeki thingy it was a they were saying comedy so I, I assume it's going to there's not really been much comedy yet yeah so just as I was saying it's nothing like any of those dark magical girl shows do you know what this is actually almost a little bit like it's like a less artsy um, actually, I, I still think, I still stand by that it's kind of like some of the bits of Prisma Ilya without the humour and without the fan service. It's also a little bit, almost like, um, what, what's that fucking, what's that fucking anime and manga about, they like rollerblade and they have weird, something nine, is it something nine? They have like weird hats with like wings and the hats speak and they, one of them gets like, metaphorically raped is it called angel nine hold on now i have to now i have to look it up i feel like it's called angel nine no i know i know where i got that from um maybe just because i'm watching something angel uh, what the fuck is that anime called This is it. This is it. It's, um... Uh... Hey, I found the article on My Sword is Unbelievably Dull. Okay. This is... The... I didn't even realise that was what I was looking at. But this is indeed My Sword is Unbelievably Dull. Which is incredibly still up. Uh, how, the... how appropriate for a laying around watching video. Um, Alien Nine, not Angel Nine. Alien Nine. That's the sh that's the show. It's a little bit Alien Nine ish, um, but not as good looking and not as interesting. <laughs> but yeah, dark things happened. Um, not like edgy, gory, dark, but just like fairly dark. But as in like saddening. Well, not like it actually impactful because they didn't give me time to really care about the characters because it's a two episode OVA. Um, I don't know. I can't say I'm like massively enjoying it right now. I have to say I can't. I can't say I'm not bored. <laughs> but we're gonna stick through it. We got two seasons of this. Hopefully, the anime, the TV anime, is um less humorless. So, about half of the second episode of the OVA has been dedicated to the sort of, um, how do I put it, like the inevitable turning of a character who, so the pacing is really weird, right, because this show has a sort of three-act structure, but the acts are, like, we're currently, we've been at, like, the end of the second act, beginning of the third act, for the last, like, the last third of the first episode, and then what seems to be, we're just entering, like, the third act proper, with 15 minutes to go. So I know this is not going to be a satisfying conclusion. Like, you, there's no way it could be. There's not enough time for it to happen. I mean, unless it's entirely one big fight scene, which would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, the, like, the, the sort of lowest point section just went on for so long, just hammering home on this kind of, like, unearned pathos. There's a, there's a phrase for you, which I did not like. Um... Things I do like, uh, the villains, the villains, like, power, powers, kind of neat and original. It's, wait, this is a reference to that one movie. What, what movie is that, where they, they drive a car, an airplane down a runway? What the fucking movie is that? Is that Con Air? There's no way that's, I mean, that happens in Con Air, but I don't think it happens like this. It might be, this might be a Con Air reference, to be honest. It might genuinely be. 
I don't know if it is, but it would be cool if it was. Um, this is a cool shot. Cool things are happening, but because we we finally fucking got through <laughs> the bullshit. This this show just this show gets weird. <laughs> this show gets weird. The main villain just turned into a ballistic missile. Uh, he said, "We'll try fighting against my true self," and then turned into an actual missile. <laughs> it's pretty epic. Honestly, like the end of that like ending fight had some really impressive visuals like it looked really nice not just that it was technically well executed but it was like like innovative interesting f filmmaking and animation techniques that i can't say i've seen that often like almost a little bit evangelionish almost reminded me a little bit of the ending of speed racer the, the film uh, pretty interesting um a little bit like maybe more more die buster than than ava it's interesting uh I don't know. I don't know if I can recommend it necessarily, but uh, kind of kind of neat. So I'm onto a TV anime now, and in a in a kind of strange, interesting thing, the first episode of the TV anime, um, like the TV anime starts with a cold open of the a very very similar scene to the cold open from the OVA, like a bad guy with a mustache in at night time at a dock, transporting illicit goods onto a ship, um, except that it plays it for comedy, so, like, the bad guy makes a joke, or, like, a, a joke happens, the illicit good are illegal, um, vegetables, <laughs> um, like, smuggled vegetables, and the scene just ends and is never brought up again, so I think that's just, like, a, a weird way for the, the show to be, like, hey, uh, this is not going to be so super self-serious like the, the OVA is. This is going to be like a more light-hearted show. Also, love the scene transitions in this show. Every time there's a scene transition, like sparkle, sparkle things go across the screen and uh, it's very cool. Um, yeah, this show is definitely, like this, the anime, or the, the TV anime, sorry, it's very clearly way more light-hearted and cartoonish. I guess. I think I'm definitely going to like this more than the OVA. So I'm on to episode 2 now. Um, something interesting about this show, um, which um, I feel like anime is lacking a lot these days, is that a lot of the gags are visual. Like a, I'd say most of the gags, at least in the first episode, were visual gags, not just characters talking, but um, stuff that was looked funny. For example... Um, the butler guy just appearing out of a flap in the ground, sticking his head out. That was a very funny moment. Uh, uh, yeah, I quite, I quite liked that first episode. Uh, um, this show is more fan servicey than the original OVA, as expected. The, the, oh, the transformation sequence, actually amazing. Looked like just the animation. There's a bit where one of the girls sort of twirls around. She has this like fluffy like, um, I don't know what to call it, quilted skirt, or, like, a, kind of looks like a tutu, you know, with all the, like, fluffy, like, uh, like, the silk stuff, and it's, it spins around, and it looks really well done, when, when, it, like, when it spins around, it's really well animated, and, um, uh, yeah, the characters are cute, like, th their relationship's nice, um, I don't know, it's just a kind of a nice comfy show. There's this character who's like a running a running gag in the show. She's like a side character, background character type of person. I don't remember what her name is. I'm sure I could look it up. But um you know what I am gonna look it up just because I I can. Um is it this one? Yes, her name is uh, Nyan Tomodachi, uh, Nyan Tomochi, N uh, Nyan Tomochi, a clumsy, shy, and quiet girl, Nyan is always carrying crayfish in the school's hallways, 
However, it usually ends up to that when Nyan trips and the crayfish goes all over. She seems to be good friends with Haruka. That's her entire personality. She's always running through the hallways carrying crayfish. Crayfish, live crayfish, just on a tray. And she always trips and the crayfish go everywhere. That's that's her entire character. It's, it's I, honestly, it's a work of genius. Best girl, by the way, is her. Um... There's a bit where she does like a magic trick, even though she's not really in the show except in the background when she's dropping crayfish. It's amazing. You, it's great. It's 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 great. So there's like a running joke, where the butler keeps popping out of little um like trap doors in the ground just in the most random places, and I gotta tell you that shit is funny every single time. <laughs> uh. I don't think I'm going to finish this all in one day, but I will finish this video. I, I just sort of, um, how do I put it? My brain decided to rebel for a bit. My brain was like, you don't want to watch anime anymore. Like, I was, I was so, when I woke, woke up this morning, I was so ready to watch anime for nine hours straight. And, uh, then my brain just was like, Oh, but do it now. I've decided to not let you do that, and so, so I don't think I can finish this show today. There's no way I can finish this show today. I mean, like it's humanly not possible. I'm gonna fall asleep fairly soon. So you know, it is what it is. I didn't even mention. Oh, my lights off. I forgot. I forgot that you can't see me without without the light. I didn't mention that. Um, they they add a third. A third main character in in the, the anime, even though it's a twin angel, in like the second episode, I think. Um, there's a there's a there's a third girl. Um, she's like a what is she? She's kind of like a Tsundere Yamoto character, I guess. Uh, she's not bad. She's an alright character. She's mostly there for like played for comedy. Um, she has an arc. Um, you know, she's about as good as the other characters, I would say. Uh, uh, this show is funny, by the way. This show is genuinely quite funny. But the, the humor is like, either absolutely absurd stuff in your face, or it's like, kind of subtle stuff. Which is like, weird, because most anime doesn't have like, subtle humor. But th there's like, there's... Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but, um, there is some, like, nice, like, subtle bits of comedy that are just, like, sort of downplayed, like, underplayed, like, they'll just move on instantly, and you're, like, either you catch it or you didn't catch it, I, and I think it's good, a lot of them are, like, visual gags, I think that's pretty good, like, it's not even, like, it, like, it's, it won't even be a gag, like, it will just be, like, a character making a particular motion that is funny. Or, like, a particular facial expression or saying a particular phrase that is, like, just, like, so, like comedic. But, like, not, like, a set-up punchline type of joke, you know? Like, it just happened. The, the, just the, the way that this woman just moved her arm in a, in a particular way to snap her fingers was, was just, like, a li like, absurd, like, funny. I can't explain, I can't repeat it in real life, because it was a motion that only the kind of, she, that was fun, the funny thing was that she moved in an impossible way. And that's just a little, like, detail. I appreciate that stuff. I appreciate that. I could have just let this slide and never mentioned it, and no one would have noticed, but, uh, this is actually the next day. I, I, I just slept and got up and continued. Now we're continuing to watch this, um, fucking, what's it called? Twin Angel. Uh, t Twin Angel, Twinkle Paradise. Oh no, wait, what? Kaito Tenshi Twin Angel Kyun Kyun Toki Meki Paradise. That's what it's called. Oh my god. They even make fun of how it's a long name, in the show. Uh, which is which is kind of based, but um. Yeah, here I am watching it the next day. So it's kind of cheating, you know, but it is what it is. Go listen to my new album, uh, Acceptably Destructive Hyperdrone by No Thank You. Go listen to that album. Uh, 
What do I have to say about this anime so far? It's fine. <laughs> it's kind of entertaining. It's a, I actually, although there, there's kind of silly forced drama, oh, um, what do I call it? You know how they have the episode, con- like, after the episode, they say, like, they do, like, a brief, like, a lot of anime do, like, a brief in the next episode type of thing. That's what, so, like, in the last episode, they mentioned, like, oh, the, the group's gonna be falling apart, and, like, can they overcome their dif- their disagreement? So I was like, oh, no, this is gonna be a bad episode. And, um, yeah, it turns out <laughs> I was right. But, um... I don't know, I kind of appreciate it for just being the exact same as every other episode like this, you know? Like, I appreciate the fact that it's just completely, uh, like, otaku shit with no effort at originality. For some reason I like that. (laughs) Um, I don't know, have I mentioned how great the character designs are in this show? The character designs are amazing. They are like, they don't look like much when you first see them. But, like, as you get to know the characters, and, like, how their personalities work, how the way they interact, like, those are some good fucking character designs. Um, I'm a big fan of those. So this is not a, um, like, there's two types of this episode. One of them is more common, which is the, um, characters randomly hate each other for one episode. They spend the whole episode hating each other, um... And then with their their mutual friend being saddened, and at the end they have a big sort of swelling pathos moment. They all they always suck. They always terrible. A big swelling. Yo, the girl just slipped with the the fucking. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> There's jokes in this anime that just have no reason to be funny every time, but just simply are funny every. T- this girl who is in the anime for no reason, with a cute hat. She has a great character design, like really. Like a, like a, what's the word? Memeable, right? Like it's a mem- very memetic character design. She has this like hat with yellow hat with like cat ears. And her only thing she does is run through the corridors of the school carrying a bunch of like crayfish on a platter and slips over and drops the crayfish. And it's the best thing in any anime. It's, it's incredibly moe, right? You've got the klutzy girl moe. You've got the cute and memorable and memetic character design. And it's also just random, funny, it's great. Uh, anyway, sorry, got distracted. So, you have this terrible trope of, like, two characters just randomly decide to hate each other. And then, um, right at the end of the episode, they, you know, make up and the music swells and you're supposed to feel emotion, but you don't actually feel emotion because it was all terribly executed and just forced for one episode. This is kind of that. But it's more like the episode of Evangelion where Shinji and Asuka have to learn to work together again and train together. Like, they have to learn to train together, basically. That's pretty much what this is. You have the mentor character in the form of um, the the guy from Sailor Moon, whatever his name is. Uh, um, trying to get him to teach him to work together again, you know. Uh, it's, it's not as well executed as, as that episode of Evangelion, obviously, because it's not it's not Evangelion quality, but it's fine. It's It plays it for comedy. Like, it's not... The good thing is that it doesn't take itself seriously, right? It's, it's like, it's not trying to be a serious drama. Well, it, sometimes it is, and that's when it's at its worst. But it, it is generally comedic. If it does take itself seriously, it doesn't last for very long. I don't see why this has such a low score on map. This is, like, the sort of thing that would normally be, like, a 7. Maybe just because it's niche, because it's, like, magical girl stuff, and very otaku-oriented, and null users tend to be normies. But, um... I mean, I would give this a 6, but I'm strict. I would give it like, a 6. I, I'd still give this a higher score than what it has on Mal, so far, at least. Like, on Mal, it has, like, a... Let's find out, actually. I have to open it in another tab. It has a 6.06 on Mal. I would give this like a 6.5, maybe even higher, like 6.7. I'd give this a 6.72. There you go. Uh, actually, maybe not a 6.72. I don't know. I don't know what I would give this. I'd, I'd say this is a fun, it's a fun show. It's not terrible. It's, it's funny. It's got consistently funny... St- it, little references. There are just a bunch of references just happened. 
That's a reference I don't get. This is a reference to some sort of con. That would. I'm sure that was. <laughs> there were funny things ever. This is a funny show. This is a good show. You should watch it. Actually, I recommend this show. Um, if you like magical ghost stuff, I've been convinced. A scene just happened that was very funny, and it convinced me. Good show. So in the end, they basically pulled off a, a Dalmakan Gelada Tanagra type of beat, where, um, unlike the Ava episode, because in the Ava episode, they just have to learn to work together, right? And it's kind of that, but in this, it's like they're, they're being sort of forced tra to train together to reestablish their, you know, like, team teamship by this authority figure. And so they both just, they both hate the authority figure, and then they bond over that, trying to, you know, defeat a common enemy, which is also the plot of Dalmak and Shalad, which, if you haven't seen, is an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. It's a, it's a fairly well-known episode of, of, of Star Trek The Next Generation, which is really good, and I recommend you watch it. It's a good episode. Uh, yeah. Although people... I, I don't know about... The, the thing about Dalmak... I shouldn't... I'm not going to go on a rant about Star Trek. I'm just going to not. I said before the humour in the show is kind of subtle. I, I would describe it as incidental humour, I think is a better way to say it. It's not necessarily subtle. It's just incidental. Like, it's not like a, a gag comedy, like... Uh, like a young comma type comedy that you would normally see in, like, a cute girls show, where it's, like, there's sort of beat, beat, punchline, or beat, 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 punchline, right? Either beat, beat, punchline reaction is a normal one, or beat, 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 punchline. Uh, so, like, you know, a, a joke that has a setup and then a payoff. Rather than that, the jokes in this show are more just, like, incidental of situations and positions that the characters are in, where something absurd happens. And it's normally not, like, dwelled on. Like, the show just sort of moves on very quickly. Like, for example... Two characters have to show up at, at a scene to defeat a bad guy. Like, and they show up, like, on a hang glider. Like, both characters just, like, hanging on, just, like, on a hang glider together. Like, it's perfectly normal. Where did the hang glider come from? Why are they on the hang glider? Like, what, what like, all of these quite And it's never, like, the show doesn't linger on it. It just, they're on the hang glider, they jump off, and that's it. They just get, like... Just because that would be a silly, funny way for two characters to arrive at a place is on a hang glider, just out of nowhere. And it's never, you know, it's not mentioned. It's not like, like normally an anime would have the another character look up and react and say, uh, what, hang glider tenani or something like that. You know, like, why, why are you on a hang glider? What? And the, like, they would have like a reaction like that. In this show, they don't do that. They, they just... Like, things just happen, and they're just funny, and then they just move on. Uh, which is, it's cool, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a unique type of humour. Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen an anime that has this particular sense of humour. Um, so yeah, I might raise my rating. I might raise my rating, even. Um, uh, I'll be curious to see what season two is like, but we're still half an anime away from that. I'm not sure if the show just sort of caught a momentum, and like like, caught its stride after, like, four or five episodes and, like, improved, or if I, it, or if it grew on me, if it's been the same as, it, hold on, I need to pause this because I just missed a joke because I'm talking to the camera, can't, it can't be missing jokes, um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if the show just, like, caught its stride or if it's me that, sort of, it grew on or, or what, but I'm, I, like, this is, like, everything I want out of an attack oriented ma magical girl show, like, it's still a map that, like, the important factors in being an otaku-oriented magical girl show are um, that it is both of those things, right? Like, like you, you, you might have a show like um, some of these edgy magical girl shows, right? Because the, the point is, like, magical girl shows are for kids, right? That, like, you know, you, you card Captain Sakura and whatever, and I, I like card Captain Sakura, but I don't really like many other magical girl shows. I've I've tried to give them a shot. They're a bit too. Um, how do I put it? Um, I I don't want to say child childish or child friendly because I I generally like stuff like that. It's it's not necessarily that. It's just like um, like they have 
it's not that they're too childish. It's just that they don't have the 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 uh, the element which I like in anime, which is sort of the uh, the otaku ness of it, or like they they have the the um, they feel almost too like broad appealing for me sometimes, or uh, some and they can easily get sentimental and stuff that I don't like, and quite often like romance heavy, which is not really something I'm interested in. Uh, which is not to say they're bad, but like when it comes to magical girl stuff, I generally prefer the not the traditional, like, targeted at kids magical girl stuff. I tend to prefer uh, targeted at otaku magical girl stuff. Um, now, there's two types of magical girl show targeted for older audiences. One of them sucks, which is the uh, the dark magical girl genre. Uh, the only one that I've ever found... I, you know, magic... I don't hate Madoka. I think Madoka's actually pretty good. Um, I don't love it. I, I don't love it, but I, I, I think, it, like, for some reason, a lot of people, it seems like people were either, like, when they first get into anime, they just love Madoka, and then people who are, like, more hardcore otaku, like, hate Madoka for some reason. I don't hate it. I think it's fine. You know, I think it's a, a decent show. I, I like, I mean, the, the movie, the Madoka movie, the third, is, is one of the worst anime ever made. Like, that sucks. But I think Madoka, the show, is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's not my favorite. It's not amazing, but I think it's pretty good. Uh, but like I, other than that, the other that like maybe Ma- Maho Shoujo's site was like, kind of fun, like kind of funny. Well, not not funny, but like, kind of. I don't know. It had it had it had some moments that were that were cool. Um, although it was. It was like the point of the show is that it's way too it's like a ridiculously over the top edgy flanderization of the genre um which often results in it being terrible but sometimes has some moments of goodness like mostly with that one white haired girl in the first episode she's introduced genuinely good emotional uh, stuff but then her character just completely changes in the following episodes and um you know, is what it is. And then the other ones, like, um, Magical Girl Raising Project, fucking awful, um, Yuki Yuna, bad, most of them are bad. But then you've got the otaku-oriented Magical Girl genre, which actually predates the edgy Magical Girl genre, um, because there were otaku, lollicons and stuff, and who, and they still are, who are really into Magical Girl stuff, shouts out my Magical Girl otaku in the audience, you know who you are. Um, and, uh, so, so then, then, um, well, you, you guys have all seen the Nanoha franchise retrospective, I assume. It was basically Nanoha, and I love Nanoha. I think Nanoha's great. I like, I like, I mean, I don't think the, see, the actual anime is that good. <laughs> the first, uh, like, uh, the first season of the Nanoha anime is kind of terrible, actually, and Nanoha A's is all right. But the movies, I, if you're going to watch, get into Nanoha, I recommend watching the movie versions of the first and second seasons. Especially the movie of A's is actually really good. I genu- I, I love that, uh, the Nanoha A's movie. I think it's really great. Um, and then you've got, like, Strikers, which I, I didn't like Strikers at all. And uh, Nanoha Vivid, which I thought was pretty good. And Vivid Strike, which I actually really liked. Um, and... Wait, I don't think I even... No, I only watched the first episode of Nanoha Vivid. What am I talking about? Vivid Strike was great. Uh, shout out to Vivid Strike. Uh, great anime. Uh, and then you've got, like, Moe Tan, which is, like, a... Uh, also really good. I love Moe Tan a lot. It's, it's hilarious. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting that I've seen, because I, I remember trying to do a deep dive on the otaku-oriented magical girl genre. But I, uh, Oh, yeah, there's... um. Nurse Witch Kamugi, which I never finished. Uh, I, I don't even know if I... I think I might have watched one episode of it. There's one that I'm trying to fucking remember. But I don't, I don't remember what it is. But, um... Oh, it seems like the first ever otaku-oriented magical girl show was this show called Akihabara Den no Gumi. So I guess I'll watch that at some point. From 1998. That, sound, that sounds good. Uh, the... The fucking character designs in this are brazy. Uh, th- well, what the fuck is the one I'm thinking of? 
Uh, hold on. Now I'm not gonna. Now I'm not gonna. There's there's this one magical girl show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the twist in the last or second last episode is going to be that the big bad guy of the whole series has been collecting the MacGuffins in order to revive or heal his dead or sick wife. And that's going to be the twist. Where does this always happen? Just as I thought the show had found its stride in terms of comedy and tone and whatever, it does, it, it does a serious plot line. I don't want a serious plot line. <laughs> it's not why I watch the show. There are other shows if I want that. I mean, I get it. It's an anime thing. It's just how anime is. You gotta, you gotta put it in somewhere. You don't really, though. I, you know, I would have rather if this just stuck to the sort of slice of lifey magical girl tone that it had, but. <sighs> Hopefully they quickly, they, hopefully the second season isn't like, isn't all this, right? That's all we can hope for at this point. Okay, well, there's obviously Prisma Ilia, which kind of sucks, but that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Um, let's see. Uh, is it, I'm, I'm just looking, looking for stuff. Um... Uh, Puni Puni Poemi. Puni Puni Poemi is a is a great show, by the way. If you haven't seen Puni Puni Poemi, hilarious OVA, like one of the funniest anime OVAs ever made. Um. Uh, so I guess that counts because that's also a tackle into Magical Girl. Um. I will. I will, I, I mean, I, I know there's one that I know exists. I'm just forgetting what it's called. I remember maybe it was Nurse Witch Komugi that I'm thinking of. Anyway, um, Nurse Witch Komugi is, I'm pretty sure like a spinoff of Soul Taker, which is great. Like that's just a great thing that could happen. But yeah, this is like every, the the point being, the difference between uh, one of those like dark magical girl shows and, except for Madoka, kind of. Um, actually, even Ma Madoka kind of fails at this, uh, is that th the, the thing that's important is that they still have to be magical ghost shows, and this show is still a magic, like, it still sticks to the, um, like, the formula of a magical ghost show, like, the sort of, uh, you know, we have to get the MacGuffins, there's a, there's a battle at the end of every episode, there's powers, there's a transformation sequence. Like, Madoka doesn't have a, a transformation sequence, as far as I remember. Like, it sort of sticks to it, you know? But also, is it, it, it just feels like a magical girl show in the same vein and tone-ish, like, as a traditional magical girl show, but aimed at otaku, right? Like, it's, it's, it's like, okay, we have that, and now we... I don't know how to fucking put this into words very well. It's good. Like, uh, this is this is my shit, basically. Like, Nanoha is n quite different from traditional magical girl shows, although I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, also, the mecha, just to complete Don Sequitur, the mecha in this show, they look like the mecha from Ghost in the Shell, uh, but with the color scheme of Ava Unit 1, which is kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if that's a purposeful reference, but... Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's cool. It's cool. It's like I like the fact that it's still appeals to like it would still appeal to someone who's a magical girl otaku because it has the magical girl formula. It's not just like a like a, someone who's it's not trying to make fun of it basically. Like it's a loving um like I I feel like dark magical girls are made in bad faith, right? Like they're made in like. Like, oh, let's take this thing from your childhood and, and oh, hashtag this destroyed my childhood or whatever. Hashtag childhood ruined. Like, they're, they're made in bad faith, right? Whereas the good otaku-oriented ones are made by people who love the genre, you know? They they just straight up... I changed my t-shirt, don't worry about it. They just straight up killed off this guy? This show is fucking nuts, okay? It... 
it's become like way more like Nanoha esque in terms of tone, like seriousness. Just on the the sort of continuum of magical girl shows, way more Nanoha esque. It was started off more Moe Tan esque. And they just killed this guy straight the fuck off. What, what fucking nuts show. Completely batshit insane. They just blew him up. And then all the characters are now traumatized. I'm pretty desensitized to rapid anime tone shifts. But um, this anime has some fucking tone shifts. Like, holy shit. This guy blows the fuck up. Everyone's traumatized. The the girl's, like, hugging her knees, gone, like, fucking catatonic, having PTSD flashbacks of the thing exploding. Then it cuts to wacky villain characters, um, and they, like, got down, dropped down a trap door, popped through the fucking, went all the way through the world, went out, it goes to a straight up, like, a gag comedy scene. Just straight up, hard cut. <laughs> hard cut from... Okay, here's what happens. Episode. There's a joke about a guy who has to run on the treadmill to to deactivate a bomb. Then instantly, cut from the joke to he gets trapped inside this contraption, blown up. All the characters witness him die and get traumatized. Then, they're all fucked. Next episode starts. Everyone's fucked, right? All these little fucking children have just had to watch their friend die in front of them brutally. They couldn't do anything to help him. And then they're just like, what the fuck, right? Then, hard cut from that to these other two girls who have been lied to their whole life by their father. Of like, you know, like, like trained to fight these people. It turns out the magical girls aren't actually bad, you know. Kind of like Nanoha season one type shit with fate. Uh, which is why I compared it to Nanoha. Kind of like, like, and then they're like discovering the truth and like figure like who are what have we been fighting for this whole time like you know blah 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 then hard cut from that to like a complete g- comedy scene about like this guy at like these other two like who were villains in the beginning but have now like like what like henchman characters just like complete absurd comedy where they're like running around in antarctica and, and stuff and one of them's pulling a dog sled on all fours, it's, like, what, what, the, the, and then now it's back, by the way, now we're back to dealing with trauma again, after that, they had one, one, like, cutaway scene of, of the, the gag stuff, and now we're immediately back to dealing with trauma, in a sit with, I love it, I can't say I don't love it, it's just, that it's, it, like, we got serious whiplash here, but I do love, I just, you know, I love me some stupid anime bullshit. So they didn't kill that guy off. He just comes back. And uh, when they say, how did you survive? He just says, I just I just withstood the explosion. And they play, it's like a comedy moment. That would have been funny if the show had kept, had not just spent like two and a half episodes or like Two episodes spread between three episodes. So, like, half of one episode, one full episode, and then another half of the last episode. Being serious. Like, the show became a serious, like, non-comedy... I wouldn't call it a drama, but just like a magical girl show with drama and not sort of a parody or, like... Not even parody, but just, like, light-hearted type of tone. Lack of self seriousness, you know. If it hadn't dropped that for for a few for a long time, I would have accepted the answer. If it had stayed as the same show it was in the beginning, then that would have been brilliant. Just like yeah, I just withstood it. Fuck you. You know that's funny. The problem being, now I just feel like I got kind of like scammed, right? Because I tried my best to be invested in. I was like, okay, not where I would have taken this show. But if you, I guess, sure, be, I'm okay with this with a show that starts off comedic becoming more serious. It's not as good as it was when it was funny, but 
I'll try and become invested in it. Like, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And then the directors or whatever, the writers just went, no, fuck you for giving a shit. This is a comedy again. And I'm glad it's a comedy again, but there's literally, like, 10 minutes left of the show. <laughs> there were, like, maybe 15 minutes when when it became a comedy again. And it was funny. I it just feel like it wasn't handled that well, you know? Um... I thought it was a bit much to kill that guy off, right? Um, did I mention my prediction was wrong? I don't remember what I've recorded. I don't. I'm kind of in a bit of a haze. Wacky show. Excited for season two. Wonder what they're gonna do with it. Who knows? Well, that was Kaito Tenshi Twin Angel Kyun Kyun Tokimeki Paradise. Certainly a show. Um, I don't know that I can give it, like, the comedy parts were really good. The slice of life parts were really good. The dramatic parts, really bad. Like, towards the end of the show, it just com completely left a sour taste in my mouth from all of the, the, uh, inappropriate, um, sort of dramatic scenes that, didn't, didn't, I'm not going to say didn't fit the tone of the show because, like, it's okay if a, a show rapidly jumps tones. Like, that's not a crime in my book. Some people really hate that. I, I don't mind that. It's just that this, the tone it went for didn't work. The right, like, the writers aren't good at writing that sort of story. Like, the characters don't really make sense in that sort of story. The world that they've set up is a world of absurdities where. There are uh, giant sea monsters and trapdoors that lead through the earth into Antarctica and, uh, or, or, sorry, not really sea monsters, giant salamanders that, that uh, are kept as a pet and like, you know, all very wacky, comedic, surreal type of world, right? And the characters who fit and belong in that world, who are also wacky, comedic, not, you know, never, never, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense for them to act in this in this dramatic way and so when they turn the show into that it 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 uh it you know the two the two aspects sort of fight each other and and it doesn't make sense it's like you it's like it suddenly wants to be a different show than it is so they just the characters sort of change in the environment the world sort of changes to accommodate the plot whereas that's not how these things should work right the plot should should be uh con like the the story should be a, ho a holistic, complete, whole right. Um, and now reading some of the the reviews and synopsis for the sequel, Twin Angels Break, they're saying it focuses even more on the the more serious side of things, which is making me not want to really watch this. Um. Now to be a true laying around watching. I have to force myself to watch the whole thing, right? That's that's the nature of the beast. Is is that you you veg out and you watch a bad anime that you're probably not going to like. Um I don't really have anything better. I do have better things to do. I could be watching other bad anime instead. The the reason I ca I, I can't say it maybe I'm being too harsh. I'm just a bit disappointed. But also the thing about uh the the show is I, I like, kind of like the badness of it. Like, it's bad in a way that only anime can be bad. Like, you can't get a TV show like this. You, you, you can't get anything else. You can't get this type of emotion and story in any other medium other than anime. Even manga can't really do this. Maybe visual novels can pull it off. But even manga, there's something about the medium that doesn't quite... Like, you, you can't have this sort of like manga is by its nature as a uh, by its nature by its format discontinuous right there's one panel then another panel then another chapter then another volume right then another arc right it's by its nature discrete whereas anime yes it's broken up into episodes but it's by the nature of being animation 
film, cinema, in the TV, you know, by the nature of being video, it is continuous. And therefore, you can have this type of weird tonal displacement. That's, in my opinion, why anime has weird tone shifts, is because it comes, a lot of anime and anime culture originated from manga and manga culture, where that doesn't feel weird, or doesn't feel as weird to, you know, um, it's also just Japanese culture and Japanese stories in general tend to have fairly rapid tone shifts. It's just sort of a st style, cultural thing, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how much I wanna I wanna watch the sequel, Twin Angel Break. I'm not gonna watch the OVA. Maybe I will. No, I'm not gonna watch the OVA. Um, but as in the the OVA, because there's the OVA for the TV show, not the original OVA, which I I already watched. Um, Twin Angels Break from 2017, so a, a long gap between these two se se uh, seasons. Um, I'll give it a go, but I might I might not finish it. This might be a, a drop. This might be a drop. You might witness a drop. Um, I don't know. I don't... I, I, you know, this stuff, this things, this, this magical, this girls, there, there is what it is. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I, I so do I recommend, um, to, uh, the, the fucking Kaito Tenchi Twin Angel Kyun Kyun Toki Meki Paradise? Kinda yeah. Kinda yeah, I do. But, uh, from from the the reviews on Mao of the sequel, it seems to be a bit of a, uh, a twin angel is a pretty cure knockoff, right? This is this is one of the highest rated reviews. Uh, twin angel uh, break is a pretty cure knockoff. So this this next season, pre cure knockoff, and uh, I'm not the biggest fan of pre cure, so I'm probably not gonna I'm probably gonna be an even less of a fan of. A knockoff of Precure. Um, you know, this is not looking promising. It's more focused on drama, and it's a knockoff of a show I already am not the biggest fan of. So, it's not looking promising, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. But, you know what, I'll give it a go. Not, not looking promising, guys. <laughs> um... We we've got a we got a brand new character. It starts off with a brand new character, two two brand new characters, not the original characters, um. And uh, some some pretty dire animation, CGI crowd shot within the first five minutes of the show. It's not looking good, guys. It's not looking promising. Funky <laughs> mode, uh. You know, maybe I'd... I like these side characters. They're... Some of them are good. There's a girl... Who seems to be, like... I don't know, like a... Probably like a, a cult club member type of girl. Then, um... You got, a, you got a girl who just inexplicably dressed like a sheep... And ends all her sentences with... Bah. You know, I like a good, um speech pattern moe speech pattern big fan of those old school moe we're going to be taking it back uh like i like that she's funny cute cute sheep girl is best girl in my opinion we've done it um just, just i just i'm dreading the moment when this is isn't a slice of life show if this oh there's also a trap uh, this would have been sick. I want I want this to just be a slice of life show where it's just these girls hanging out in school. I don't want this to be a fucking thing, you know. But it's gonna be a thing. I don't want this to be a drama. I so much do not care about this new. The new characters. They got rid of the old characters with the good character designs and the generic but appealing personalities and replace them with the most boilerplate 
fucking two dimensional metaphorically annoying stupid generic die die characters they replaced them with death I like some of the side characters but uh I don't know if I can stick with 12 episodes just because I like two side characters in a show, you know? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it the three episode test. They've also changed the law. Fucking, they don't transform with the same device anymore. That's fine. Magical girl shows do that way. All transforming hero shows change the law between seasons. It's, it is what it is. Uh, did you know that um, Twin Angels is based on a slot machine game? So there you go. That might give you give you something to work with. They never played into it until just now, which is the the, the OP of 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 Twin Angels Break. Is um. It has a has a slot machine motif in it, uh, or, or like a gambling motif. But they never they never really brought it up before. So I never brought it up before, but I have now brought it up. This is how much we're running out of stuff to say. Why would you? This isn't even like the same show. Like it doesn't have the original characters in it. Like. I guess this, it's not even really about the same thing as the OVA or the, like the tone is different from both of the, like the tone is not related to the OVA or the Toki, Kyun Kyun Toki Meki Paradise. Uh, the tone is different. It's more bland. Um, the characters are different. The lore and universe are different. Uh, what 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 does this have to do with the show I just watched? It's very very strange, very anime thing to happen, and and God, this show just looks like shit. It's a shame. It's a shame. This is completely unrelated to the subject of this video because Twin Angels Break is so boring that I got distracted watching watched an entire other anime, <laughs> and then got more distracted thinking about the state of the anime industry and researching. Uh, and so I think we're going to end it here. I don't think, I think I'm going to drop Twin Angels Break because I, I why am I forcing myself to watch? Like, there's no, I'm not going to get anything out of this. So I'm going to drop this after two and a half episodes. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a three. Pretty shit. Uh, so I was thinking about, I, was, I, I, I watched a, an entirely different show. Right, I watched uh, uh, Gun Gambare. What, what is? Hold on, I, I can't fucking. Uh, Gambare Doki Chan, right? Which is interesting, interest a currently airing show, interesting currently airing show because um, it's based on a, a like a a, a a Twitter artist, the, this guy who the guy who made Miru tights, right? I follow him on Twitter. Um, He's based. His name's Yom, uh, Yom Yomu, I guess. Uh, the guy who made Miru Tights also made the, draws these other characters. They now, I guess, Miru Tights was successful. It's similar to Miru Tights, but less, a bit less edgy. Uh, more, more wholesome comedy focused. I actually quite liked it. Seven minute episodes. Kind of recommend it to be honest. And I was thinking, this is kind of the state... Like, this... If, if I could, like, sum up where I think anime is heading in one anime, this is, like, kind of it. And heading isn't even the right word, because it's already there. We have this anime. It's not heading there. This is just, like, this is how anime is now. Uh, so, the thing that I really like about anime... my All my favorite anime are... But not all of them. Most of them are... Um, uh, 
slice of life cute girls doing cute things shows four cute girls shows you know Hidamari sketch lucky star kon yuyushiki yuri yuri etc 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 right got you sir a bunch of them i love all of those shows right uh, they, they, and I don't know if you've noticed, they've stopped making them. They just don't seem to make those anymore. Um, because, and here's my theory. I don't know if this is actually true. Again, not Japanese. Not sure if you noticed, but I'm not Japanese. Don't know the state of the Japanese anime industry. So all of those shows, and I don't think maybe, I, I'm not sure if people in the West realize how, realize the extent to which this is true. All of those shows, all of those type of shows, right? The ones that you love that I love, right, they all come from the same magazine, right, there's a, they all adapted from manga in the same magazine, the same way, like, there's basically all the popular shonen are in Shonen Jump, um, all the popular manga, all the popular, like, of these cute girl shows come from, from Manga Time Kirara, right, which is, is a seinen magazine, and they have multiple different Manga Time Kiraras, so there's Manga Time Kirara, Manga Time Kirara Carrot, and I think there's another one. Um, Manga Time Kirara Max. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure how many people realize just to the extent to which everything good comes from these this one manga magazine. Um, so here, let me let me tell you, this is all all stuff that was from Manga Time Kirara, right? Uh, a channel. Anima Yell, never actually read that one. Blend S, Dojin Work, GA uh, Art Design Class, Hidamari Sketch, Kaon, Kill Me Baby, Koisuru Asteroid, Machikad, uh, Machikado Mazoku, that, the one about the demon girl. Uh, new Game, Ochikobore Futa, I've never heard of this before. I don't know if this, is this even gone, anime adaptation? It does have an anime adaptation. I've never never heard of that before. RPG Fudo-san. SS Astro, uh, Puella Magi, this is, yeah, that's just a Ma Madoka spinoff. Uh, Achikochi, Shoura Coffin Kuro, uh, uh, Sancha Sanyo, Slow Star, Yuyushiki, Kiniro Mosaic, uh, Gochi Yusa, Stella no Maho, Comic Girls, and, uh, um, uh, that's it, that's, that's, that's enough. Uh, there's probably more. There's, there's almost certainly more. Kanamemo, Free, uh oh no, this is a different free. That's not the free that you know. I was I was surprised to see free there, but it's a different free. It's just it's an anime with the same name or a manga with the same. But you, what I'm saying is they all come from this one fucking magazine, and um, I don't know. It's very centralized. I don't know if it, maybe it's losing popularity or something like the genre is losing popularity. My my bet was right. My 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 guess is is this, this and. Please, if you know more about the otaku scene in Japan, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I may very well be wrong. This is just a guess. My guess is these shows aren't very popular anymore because the hardcore of hardcore sort of moe otaku have moved to visual novels because, you know, they're just kind of... I, I don't know. Like, hardcore, hardcore otaku in Japan... Now, you know, anime is the side thing, eroge is the main thing for them. As far as I've read, like, the hardcore otaku in Japan are eroge fans, not necessarily just anime fans, right? Whereas in the West, most of the people who call themselves otaku, the, the whole thing is centered around anime. It seems like these days in Japan, anime is more seen as one element of a, the whole otaku thing, with the most hardcore being eroge. And since cute girl shows are marketed primarily at hardcore otaku, those hardcore otaku aren't buying DVDs as much anymore because they can spend that money on eroge instead and get more bang for your buck, right? Eroge are longer and more, you know, you just get more. Uh, so maybe they can't market to them anymore. But what they can do is market to... They're basically trying to catch up to the market, right? So, firstly, the hardcore otaku fan base is aging, which is why you've seen more and more anime about work and university moving up from, from high school. 
And secondly, um, the younger generation aren't pure, you know, why would you make a show that is pure moe when you can put mo cute girls into a isekai show, which is what they all do, right? Uh, because that way you get, you know, most people want that most people aren't going to get upset because their anime has a plot. I'm not most people. I will do that. But most people aren't going to get upset because their anime has a plot. So you can appeal to the Moe fans and the sort of shonen action fans by making your, well, really, it's just a light novel adaptation, right? You take an already popular light novel with these elements and then you can hope to catch both fan bases, the cute and the cool side of anime, as the wars used to be back in the day, the big war between cute and cool, they are now one entity. And unfortunately, that entity is isekai light novel adaptations, um, which I'm sure they must be getting sick of in Japan. I mean, this isn't the first time this has happened. There was once a time when all anime was sci-fi. Um, like, I think people are getting a bit, you know, it died out eventually, it'll die out again, but who knows? So my, my point being, that when it comes to these comedy slice of life cute girl shows, I think that Ganbare Doki Doki chan is gonna be sort of more just the future of it. We got short seven minute episodes set in a work environment, uh, released on the web, adapted from a Twitter artist, right? This is not a manga time Kirara adaptation with a full anime and full cast of characters, right? Because this is... Do you, do you see what I mean? Like, that's the only way you're going to get the pure moe these days. And this isn't even really pure moe. This is like... I don't know what it is. But it's cool. I like it. It looks great. It's very well animated. And rendered. Like, the drawings. Not just the way they, they move, but also the way that they look. The textures. All of it's great. The voice acting's great. It's good. It's a good show. The writing's good. The character design's obviously great. Honestly, it, it's pretty. If you if you like um, uh, uh, office cl office woman clothing, <laughs> you know, give it a give it a shot. Uh, yeah, it's it's catch it's kind of nice. It's a nice show, but I I'm, I'm not sure I'm happy if this was like the only. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? Do you get what I'm trying to say here? Uh, yeah. Um, so that's that's the point that I'm trying to make. Is is uh, That's where I see sort of things going. I, I have now officially dropped Twin Angel Break. Because I don't want to watch that shit. And I guess we end the, we end the video here. Uh, now, I've, I've tried reading Manga Time Kirara. Like, manga. Right? Like, I've, tr I've read the manga of... Um, at least one of these, I'm pretty sure. Don't remember which. One. Oh, Shoulder of Coffin Kuro, I've read some of. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> I should probably read, like, maybe I just become a. Maybe I just move over to reading the manga of these these things. Because, like, for example, Yuyushiki, one of my favorite anime, still going. The manga's still going, according to Wikipedia. Uh, Achikochi. I I know for some reason I've heard people don't like the Achi Achikochi. I like it. I thought it was great. Still going. Uh, Hidamari Sketch is still publishing. Who knows if they're ever going to make a new anime series of it? But it's still publishing. Blend S still publishing. Uh, you know. And there's a bunch of these. So I think maybe I should just watch all of the. Manga Time Kirara uh, adaptations that uh, I haven't I haven't seen yet. I think that's the play because I know they're going to be good. Like none of them are bad. Some of them are, you know, better than others. Like uh, Wakaba Girl, I'm pretty sure is a Manga Time Kirara adaptation. I think and that one not so great. Uh, Kinuo Mosaic not so not not amazing. Uh, uh, a channel didn't like it, but not that bad. You know, you know what I mean. 
Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, so I, I guess that I guess things I guess stuff you know I guess I guess things and stuff. Yeah, so I, I, maybe I'll make a series out of that. I don't know. It doesn't have to be content. Maybe I'll just do it, and then d d just do it for my own enjoyment. Maybe I don't have to make everything into content for my YouTube channel. Pfft. What the fuck am I talking about? Of course I do. Uh, so yeah, that was um, me attempting to to watch uh, Twin Angels series. My 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 opinion. Don't watch the. Don't bother watching the original OVA. Uh, and. I guess check out the anime if you're interested in a the magical girl show. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my take. I'm sticking with it. Just for the sake of completeness, I would like to mention there's actually a, 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 a two other manga time. There's actually mo many other manga time um, uh, manga magazines. One of them's just called Manga Time. That was the original one. Uh, but uh, I, sh I wanted to mention that there's also Manga Time uh, Kirara Forward, which uh, has been home to such series as uh, y uh, Yumekui Meri, which I've never heard of, Hana Yamata, Gako Gurashi, Unhappy, Yuru Camp, Harukara Masif, uh, Tamayomi, and slow loop, which hasn't even aired yet, so I don't know why I mentioned that. But um, oh yo, slow loop is a fishing series. I'm adding that to my plan to watch. Hell yeah, love fishing. Shout out to fishing, by the way, just in case you. Would... Shout out my fish. <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure it's not airing until, uh, next year. <laughs> but it's gonna make sure that I get notified when that happens. Notify me when airing. I think I, I think I might have just made that shit up then, because there's like three different manga time Kirara, uh, anime adaptations that are on the way. They just haven't aired yet. I think we just had a, a little bit of a gap. There haven't been any good. Sl That's not even true. I mean, that other fishing one. What's it called? What was it called? Um, I don't remember. You, you know the one I'm talking about. That wasn't that long ago. That was. That this year. But what fucking what was that called? Hat Hataraku Saibo? Was that it? Yeah, that was only that wasn't that long ago. So, you know, we got that. But that was nice. Uh but yeah, the Manga Time Kirara has uh, like a whole bunch of fucking shit. Wait, we already talked about Manga Time Kirara. I'm looking for Manga Time fucking where is it? Whatever. Basically, the point being, there's a lot. There's all the good manga comes from, comes from Manga Time Kirara. Uh, they even have a Yuri magazine called Tsubomi. So, so shouts out to them. And uh, yeah.